facebook.com. But in just a few seconds, we will also be now live on Facebook Live. That is correct. You can now see us. You now have a visual uh, confirmation that we're here along with an audio uh, confirmation that we're here because we're now on both of those. And in just about 60 to 90 seconds, we'll be going live on Facebook Live. Uh, this is the show that we've been doing almost since we were quarantined. I think we're hitting our 50th day yeah. there about. This is day 50. No. This is day 48. Day 48. Day 48. Let's not push it. Let's not push it a day at a time. Hope everybody's doing well out there. We're all going to have our ups and downs, our highs and lows. We're, uh, we're going to have a lot of crazy things going on. But right now, uh, if you're listening, that's good. That's good. And if I'm speaking, that's good, at least for me. So uh, this is your daily distraction from all the hoo-ha anxiety weirdness going on in our world today. Uh, it is something that I do uh, not only for you, for me. It makes me feel good to be able to do it. It gives uh, a wife who happens, my producer happens to be my wife, Shirley Low Visit. Let's give her a hand right now. Uh, it gives us both something to look forward to and something to kind of schedule our day around. Um, I know some of you are working and you're working more than you ever worked before. And I know that's kind of strange. And I know some of you aren't working at all. And I know that the work is different, even if it's uh, uh, something, you, you know, like uh, I was thinking about the landscapers here in my neighborhood. <clears throat> they're still doing their landscaping schedule, but they're out there pretty much by themselves. So that's a wee bit strange for them. After a while, you got to begin to notice that there are no people around. Uh, oh, wow. We got to get this live video going on Facebook Live right now and officially kick off the program. So there we are live on Facebook Live. So let me reintroduce everything one more time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads. My name is Tony Vizic, and your name is Jocko. That's your name for the day. Uh, we got a great show for you. This is Living on a Thin Line. It is our regular daily diversion we do every day at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Facebook Live, uh, on YouTube, on the Comedy Schools channel, and on uh, Strictly Audio, Comedy Schools Radio and Network.com. So three ways, not one, not two, but three ways to be able to access the program, depending upon uh, uh, the cut of your gym, depending on which way you roll, mother. So uh, I got a good show for you lined up today. We are still working on our list of the 10 coolest people ever. I think that's just what we'll call it, the 10 coolest people ever. Okay, we have seven who are confirmed on the list. We're looking for three more. I'm going to get into all that in a moment. Uh, so we're hoping by the end of the week, they will have that wrapped up. We can move on to another list. Hello, Craig Persky. Hello, Kelly Wilson. People are starting to join in right now. Uh, I've got cool things to show you today. i got a couple of great recommendations musically. Um, so uh, you know, I'm running a lot of weird, you know, you're running like weird frustration. I had a, a minor victory today when I finally got my wife's, uh, well, both the cars are both of ours, but she generally drives our Jeep Renegade, which is out. Oddly enough, we've just put in the garage, um, but I finally was able to get registered. It took me two and a half weeks to get it registered. You can't go to the MVD or DMV, whatever it's called in your town. You can't even make an appointment to go. Uh, everything has to be online or by phone. And phone wait times, you would think you're back in the 70s because sometimes you're waiting up to an hour. Hello, Diane Howell. So what went on with that car was we live in an area where normally you don't have to do any sort of emissions test because it's a semi-rural. But the car was five years old, and there's a rule when a car is five years old, it has to have an emissions test, unless you could show that it should be exempt. Well, I filled out the paperwork to make the show, uh, to make the, uh, to make the uh, um, um, car exempt, and then it was a Byzantine Kafka-esque uh, rolling down into a mine shaft I went through. Uh, no, I did not have to pay a late fee, okay? I was able to eventually get a temporary paper plate. So for about a week before the car expired, and yes, maybe I should have started beforehand, but who does? But a week before the car, uh, the plate expired, I began trying to register the car. I, I, I got stuff from the, uh, uh, the agency that will issue it an exemption. They issued the exemption, but their computer wasn't talking to the uh, motor vehicle division's computer because they had you guessed it, upgrade to improve their computers and actually cause a bigger problem. 
So, but today, finally, I went on uh, ADOT, Arizona Department of Transportation. Lo and behold, there it was. Got a car that we won't be watching very, that we won't be driving very much. Finally registered. Got other little minor things like that to deal with too, with banking and stuff. But, but you know what? Maybe we got the time now. We're seeing it through. Hello, Colleen Pertle, Shane Hicks, uh, Randy Ayoma. Uh, yeah, uh, so sometimes those are little frustrations that we deal with. Here's the other weird thing I'm dealing with. Sometimes now I go to bed kind of early. Uh, early for me is any time before midnight. But the problem is I'll then wake up at 2 and be up to like 4.30. I'm doing that weird sleeping in hunks thing. So, uh, uh, but you know what? I've always done weird things like that. Maybe what's going on right now is what is classically uh, your normal weirdness just seems a little more amplified because there's nothing around masking it. A um, couple things coming up uh, this Sunday night. You should be watching uh, later on this evening. We'll be posting it up this Sunday night. Tony Visick presents Sunday night's funnier special, Mother's Day edition, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Tony Visick pre presents Sunday night's funnier with one of our favorite comics, Diane Miner, who is a very funny lady and a very funny mom. Uh, she is also the mom of a very funny guy named Travis Miner. So she'll be featured this Sunday night along with some other great comics. If you're looking for something to do, if you go, my God, uh, I've watched everything on Netflix. I've watched everything on Amazon. I'm now just wandering around. Uh, we have to find something new. We're making new for you. We're making new for you. And along with doing this show every day at 2 p.m., we now have a regular Sunday night stand-up comedy show on Zoom, Sunday night's funnier. So uh, I want to tell you about that. Also, May 27th, 28th. Brand new stand-up comedy workshops. Yeah, you know what? Do we need comedy now? You're darn right we do. You want to be able to do it right? You're darn right you do. Okay, and maybe I can help you with that. Uh, just email me at comedyschools at hotmail.com. Send me a message on Messenger. Uh, check it out. Uh, we've got a lot of people enrolled in our advanced class and a good chunk in the current beginning class. Great crop of very talented, dedicated, creative people. You might want to be a part of that. All you got to do is go to comedyschools.com to register for the upcoming sessions, okay? All right, let's get to the stuff, because that's kind of what I do, is I show you a little, uh, 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 hello, Jim Lacey, my good friend. How are you, sir, down there in Texas? Um, uh, it was good uh, uh, doing a little Facebook messenger with you today. I'm sorry that we didn't, we weren't able to see it the Sunday night show. Maybe you'll be able to catch this Sunday night show with Diane Miner. We've kind of built the show around a couple things, one being you, being able to interact with you the way we are right now. We've kind of done that. Then there's two other things. The second thing is I show you some knickknack, memorabilia, some interesting item that I think that I own that is uh, just shoved here into my office. Things that meant something to me at one time that I then totally ignored. Kind of like those toys when you got a little older and stop playing with your toys and they were left in the closet to gather dust. You know, and sometimes we have to go back and look at those toys again. So the first thing I'm going to show you is not an autograph and it's not a memento. But it is kind of interesting. I got to reach down to get it because it's big. Okay, I got it. So it's a book, but it's not just any any book. It's kind of a cool book. Yesterday, I showed you a uh, uh, – I had bought something in an antique store years ago that was um, the Boston Evening Herald Express. It was the an original copy of a newspaper from 1899, and I got it wrapped in plastic. And I've often used it as like uh, uh, on a desk that I set things on top of. It's pretty cool. I have this book. All right, you can see that. Okay, right there. Do you see that right there? It's kind of hard to read. And it might be reading backwards. So I'm going to read it for you. It's a pretty thick book. It's called Front Page 100 Years of the Los Angeles Times. Front Page 100 Years of the Los Angeles Times. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. First off, What's interesting is newspapers are now kind of a thing of the past almost totally. They still print them, but very few people read them. We're all reading online. But I want to show you what a newspaper looked like back in, say, 1881, when it was called the Los Angeles Daily Times. That's what it looked like. It's probably not a really good shot, but there you can see it, okay? And the picture I want to show you today, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because it's not a great visual, is... Um, Friday morning, May 7th, which is two days from now, 1936. Check it out. Check it out. See if I can get it up there. 
And it's the Los Angeles Times from 1936. There you go. Take a close look. You'll kind of recognize that picture. What is that a picture of? That is a picture of the Hindenburg. And it says, Zeppelin Blast kills 35, giant dirigible blazing wreck. Airship blows up on its arrival from at Lakehurst Airport from Germany. Passengers leap, leap from burning ship. So uh, let's see what else was in the news that day. Age pension measure voted. Tentative list of missing and known crash survivors. Survivors leap to safety. It's mostly the front pages about that. Uh, the uh, page right before that was from 1937, Saturday morning, February 6, 1937. Big headline there. President asked 15 judge Supreme Court in shakeup. Okay. Uh, president, that would be President Franklin D. Roosevelt, asked for a 15 judge Supreme Court in shakeup. So uh, anyway, there you go. This book is dozens and dozens and dozens of front pages from what uh, has been and still is one of the great newspapers in America, the Los Angeles Times. In the 1930s, uh, in the height of the Depression, Franklin Roosevelt kept coming up with novel ways to get people working. And there were things like the NRA and the WPA and uh, all these things. And a very conservative Supreme Court kept finding all of them unconstitutional. And even though uh, uh, by not having these programs, uh, less people were put back to work and less money was in the economy, uh, Roosevelt had no choice but to go along because they were the Supreme Court. And one of the things that he wanted to do was called court packing, court packing. So he wanted to increase the number of uh, judges on the Supreme Court so that he could put more on so uh, that were friendly to his ideas and programs. So everything old is new again. We see that nowadays with uh, Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump went on, went on with Merrick Garland during the Barack Obama administration and continue with all the federal judgeships. They're working very hard, very rapidly to uh, get as many federal judges and hopefully another Supreme Court judge on the bench as a conservative bent before uh, Donald Trump leaves office if he does uh, uh, this year, or actually in 2021. So same stuff, same stuff, just different decade. Jim Lacey, going back 100 years, I was afraid you were going to pull up a page in. Jim Lacey born today. Not quite, Jim, not quite. You don't go back that far, and you are young at heart. And uh, always a fascinating guy to converse with and always doing fascinating things. And uh, by the way, a true inspiration. Okay. I want to get back to this for a second. Let's talk about this. Uh, our coolest, coolest people ever. I'm going to repeat who the seven are that are definitely on the list. This is sacrosanct. This is in stone. This cannot be changed. These are the seven coolest. We're looking for three more. Miles Davis, Keith Richards, James Dean, Frank Sinatra, Steve McQueen, Prince, and Humphrey Bogart. By the way, if you disagree with any of those, then you're not cool. Uh, <laughs> you're cool. You're cool and you're pretty as you feel. On our maybe list, and it's gotten kind of long, okay? Dean Martin, Sean Connery, Charles Bronson, Billy Holiday, Muhammad Ali, Humphrey Bogart has now moved from the maybe over to the permanent cool list. Glenn Campbell, Elvis, uh, my brother Jerry, me, uh, Buddy Rich, Richard Pryor, John Kennedy, President John Kennedy, the only politician on the list, Bruce Lee, the only karate guy, Samuel L. Jackson, who is always cool. John Wayne, Chuck Norris, a lot of movie stars. Okay, Tina Turner, uh, Catherine Hepburn, uh, anybody who played James Bond, Lauren Bacall, and Jack Nicholson. Now, you can add to the maybe list, or you could actually call out any of those and say that I think that they should be on the cool list. If, by the way, you do something goofy, like you go, you know, uh, Corky the Clown. Someone puts Corky the Clown on the list and then three people vote for it. I'm going to override that. Although uh, when I was a little kid, I thought Corky the Clown was pretty, pretty cool. So we're still looking for three more on our cool list, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paul Whitney is watching right now. Paul Whitney is a cool guy. Definitely. All right. Let's get to the music. Randy Hauser is watching. Hello, Randy. Uh, let's get to the music. What music am I going to recommend? Uh, Diane Hollis saying Denzel. Did we have Denzel on the list already? Did I say his name? All right, we're going to write him down on the maybe. Okay? We're going to put him down on the maybe. Denzel. Denzel. 
Washington. Pretty good recommendation. We're starting to get pretty, um, a lot of people on the maybe list, but not a lot of votes for anyone on the maybe list. And I'm going to do a couple things here. Even though I love John Wayne movies, I do. I love Westerns. Uh, I'm going to take John Wayne off the list because he was iconic, but he wasn't cool. He wasn't hip slick. Uh, Sidney Poitier is uh, on the list. Okay, he's on the list. And is there anybody else who I'm just going to take right off? Yeah, I'm going to take Glenn Campbell off. And as much as I love Glenn Campbell, having uh, uh, autographed, uh, have an autograph from Glenn Campbell and thought that the work he did with Jimmy Webb's songs in the 60s uh, was uh, artistic and pure musical poetry. Uh, Glenn was a lot of things, affable, funny, down home, handsome, good hair. Great goddamn hair on that guy when he was young. Not cool. So Jim Lace is cool. Dean Martin, anyone ballsy enough to slide down a fire pole while half-wasted, sometimes worse, and do with a smile and always have a comeback and never say anything ugly and sing, hold on, and sing that well is absolutely deserving to be on the top 10. So now we've got two votes for Dean Martin, okay? He's the first guy who on our list now has two votes. Of all the names I've rattled off, I'm getting tired of kind of rattling them off. Uh, but Sean Connery, Charles Bronson, Billy Holiday, Muhammad Ali, Elvis, me and my brother Jerry, Buddy Rich, Richard Pryor, John Kennedy, Bruce Lee, Samuel Jackson, Chuck Norris, Jack Nicholson, Denzel Washington, Catherine Hepburn, Lauren Bacall, anybody who played in the James Bond movie, although we do have Sean Connery up there, uh, Tina Turner, and Sidney Poitier. Poitier. How do you say that name? Poitier? Poitier? Sidney P. I like um, you like, um, Jack Nicholson. You like Jack Nicholson. So that's two. That's two for Jack Nicholson. So on the maybe list, two now have uh, two votes. And they are Dean Martin and Jack Nicholson. Although three now because Randy, Randy Ioma votes for uh, Denzel. So there's three now that have three votes. Uh, and those three are Dean Martin, Jack Nicholson, and Denzel Washington. Okay. Uh, you can still add names if you want, but we've got a boatload right now. Uh, Diane Hall says, I think Sean Connery should be on a permanent list, so that gives him two votes. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he did a lot of cool stuff. But think about the baseline for a second. Okay. As we're looking at what cool is. Okay. We're looking for a hipness. We're looking for an air of detachment, but at the same time, totally aware. We're looking for someone totally comfortable in their own skin. We're looking for somebody who, when they walk into the room, not only they command it, they change the temperature of things. So if Miles Davis is the top, okay, and if we're going with a guy like Miles Davis or a guy like Keith Richards, and no one can ever argue that they weren't cool, okay, then we kind of look at everybody else. So it's just like I took John Wayne off the list. I love John Wayne. I love Glenn Campbell. But they're not cool. They're not cool, daddy -o. They're not like, you know, everything's cool, man. Uh, Kelly Wilson is going Dean Martin. That's three. Three for Dean. Three for Dean. We got three for Dean. Okay. Uh, three for Dean. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. And, you know, for all of us who are my age, we watched the Dean Martin comedy hour with little kids. And Dean Martin was not our generation. But it was a great show. And he had a lot of great rock bands on. He had a lot of great rock bands on that show. So it was a fun show. It was always fun. That door opened. You never knew who the surprise guest was going to be. Uh, him either acting drunk or being drunk the entire time. It was just a blast. Uh, Jim Lacey uh, says, yeah, Kelly. All right, good. People starting to form little groups. Uh, Josh, uh, Josh Lee Nord definitely says Denzel. So that's two now, three all together for Denzel. Champ de Blasio says, Tony Vizic seems pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I, I you know, I think that's two for me. That's two for Tony Vizzi. Okay, my brother put it, put me on, and uh, you know what? I'm gonna vote for my brother. So that's two for my brother. Uh, Jim Lacey replying to Champ De Blasio. Uh, uh, he'd be my next big choice after Dean Martin. All right, all right. So that makes me uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Dean, and Sammy, or maybe it makes me Joey Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, how many people remember the Joey Bishop show? Uh, 
And by the way, if you uh, allow yourself to forget the Joey Bishop show, you have uh, more space in your head for the valuable stuff. Let's get to right now. This is a evolving process. Let me tell you who's got more than one vote right now. Dean Martin has three. Sean Connery has two. Denzel Washington has three. Jack Nicholson has two. I have two. My brother Jerry has two. So uh, let's get to the music. Let's get to the records I'm going to recommend today. All right. And this first one, uh, they still get played a lot on classic rock. Okay. But you talk about, uh, you talk about, hello, Jim Perry. You talk about a band who really changed horses mid midstream. Al Berman. Hello, Al. This band here, that is the Guess Who. And for those of you that are uninitiated to living on a thin line, what we do towards the end is, uh, my idea is we have to look at old things with new eyes. That means sometimes stuff we have laying around our house that we haven't paid attention to in years, that we give it a second look. I have an extensive vinyl collection. Some of these albums have not been played in 20 or 30 years, but I've always kept them. And here we have the Guess Who. There you go. Share the land. Now, uh, in, on, a, on the front in a rustic cabin is a Native American. On the back... Uh, or maybe a Canadian American because they're from Canada. There's the guess who with him as he's doing something uh, interesting. Uh, either that or maybe uh, paying him off. I have no idea. Giving him some peyote. That's what's going on. They all showed up at this guy's house to score some peyote buttons so they can write more music. So this was their communist album. That's why it's called Share the Land. And the big hit off, of course, was um, Share the Land. Maybe I'll be there. Take your hand. Maybe I'll be there to share the land. They'll be given away when we all live together. Talking about together now. So that was a huge hit. Also, a hand-me-down world. I got one already. So those were the two big hits off of this. Of course, their monster that uh, really kind of defined them and kind of redefined them, redefined the guess who was American Woman. It's got that great opening, that stunning opening. But before they became that sort of rock star band, they were kind of a ballad hit with songs like These Eyes. And there was a couple others that are uh, Al Berman would know. These Eyes and, uh, uh, oh, and Laughing. I should laugh. Laughing. So they were uh, kind of like ballad. It was kind of a ballad band do a lot of like soft uh, love songs that were really, really, really good. And then somewhere along the way, they decided, no, man, we're going to fucking rock out. We're going to rock out. That's what we're going to do. And they came out American Woman. And, of course, this album, Share the Land. So uh, what I'm going to recommend, even though I showed you um, Share the Land, showed you that album, and I always called it their socialist communist. They were from Canada. By the way, a uh, socialist communist uh, album. Uh, an American Woman, of course, was an, uh, an anti-war protest song. I don't need your ghetto scene. I don't need your war machine. Sparkle light, not lights, sparkled lights can hypnotize. Sparkle someone else's eyes, a woman. So um, I'm going to recommend you dig back into their ballads because they're really pretty. Uh, listen to Laughing and listen to These Eyes. And uh, you'll hear some great, great work, some great, great licks, some great, great hooks. But uh, the Guess Who were monsters and then kind of disappeared. Uh, they were led by Burton Cummings on piano with vocals. But on the bass of this band that did these beautiful pop ballads and later on did all this great uh, kind of rock work. Uh, hold on. Jim Lacey says, love Guess Who. There's Who, Cher, and then every, there's Who, Cher, and then everyone else. Founding fathers arrive on one kind of boat and black slaves on an entirely different kind, damn hard to justify. Uh, I think that's from one of their songs. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it is. So here was the weird thing that came out of the Guess Who. So Burton Cummings was the star of the Guess Who. He's a good looking guy, dark hair, mustache, playing piano, very soulful. Uh, they had an overweight bass player, okay? It was a good, good, good bass player. And after the Guess Who disbanded, or after he left the Guess Who, this guy formed one of the monsters of the mid-70s, Bachman Turner Overdrive. Uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive with songs like Taking Care of Business and You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, which were about as far afield from the pop ballads and sort of soft jazz rock riffs 
that the guess who did. So it just goes to show you never know. You know, it just goes to show you never know. It just goes to show you never know uh, what the ever-evolving artistry will be with someone who decides you're going to continue on. So many people hang it up, man. And I understand hanging it up, you know, uh, in the comedy business, in the acting business, in the music business. But uh, you never know where you're going to go, okay, if you just keep going. And for Randy Bachman to go from being a bass player, hardly discernible in a lot of the songs of uh, the early Guess Who, to being um, Bachman of Bachman Turner Overdrive, of those monster pop, heavy riff rock songs of the 70s. Which, let's be honest, if you're around then, you got sick of hearing those damn things. How big was taking care of business? Elvis Presley himself. Elvis Presley himself uh, uh, adopted taking care of business as him and his posse, him and Sonny Red and all those guys. Come on, Sonny. Come on, Red. Let's go get a Cadillac and a peanut butter sandwich. It was their, uh, as their motto. They even had belt buckles that said TCB. Taking care of business, see? I'm taking care of business, Sonny. All right, let's get out there and do it. <laughs> We're going on tour. No wives. No wives. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's how big taking care of business got to be. And if you're around, then you actually got sick of those songs. That's another thing. There might be a song you loved that got played so much at some point. You went, ugh. Stairway to Heaven is a perfect example. Uh, at a certain point in the history of every human being, who was anywhere from in junior high to college when Stairway to Heaven came out, about five years after that, if it started to play on your radio, you switched the channel because you'd heard it so many goddamn times. And such it was with Bachman Turner Overdrive. Now I'm going to show you something rare and esoteric. That's what we're going to wrap up with today. Something that you, uh, you might know, you might not know, okay, but... Okay, I'm going to recommend it because uh, we've we've talked a lot about uh, mid and late 60s uh, psychedelic pop rock band, and prog rock bands like Procol Harum. Here's another British band. Let me show you the album cover. There you go. There's the album cover. Okay, very kind of British. Okay, uh, there you go. Status quo, and they're sitting on top of a bunch of matchboxes. That's what they're doing. And this album is called uh, Messages from the Status Quo. It's a cadet concept. I don't, I've never even heard of that. Uh, I've had it forever. And here's what's on, and here's what, and hence in a moment, why there are matchsticks and them sitting on top. The songs, mostly forgettable. Black Veils of Melancholy, When My Mind Is Not Live, Ice in the Sun, Elizabeth Dreams, Gentleman Joe, Sidewalk Cafe, Paradise Flat, Technicolor Dreams, Spicks and, uh, Spicks and Specks, which was kind of good, Sunny Cell Phone Sky, and then the monster off of this, Pictures of Matchstick Men. So if you're around the late 60s, when that, that was one of those songs that blasted through even the smallest of transistor radio. That dee 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 It was just, it was such a heavy, cool riff. And it put the status quo in the pantheon of always remembered classic rock uh, music from uh, the late 60s for that song and that song alone. Now, the band hung around forever. They had British hits, uh, mid-level British hits. They never had anything that closely came close to pictures of Matchstick Men. But if you want to hear a perfect example of kind of a, a cross between British prog rock and British acid rock, and still a song that has a great hook that's going to stay with you, okay, then status quo and YouTube pictures of matchstick men. And that's why it's a bunch of young guys sitting on a bunch of uh, matchboxes because it, it's a picture of matchstick men. Okay. Uh, Joshua Lee Nord says, what about Genesis? Yeah, without a doubt, Genesis. Without a doubt, Genesis. When you talk about prog rock coming out of uh, uh, England, in the late 60s, early 70s, and also gave us uh, Phil Collins as well. Okay, that's going to kind of wrap it up for the day, you guys. Uh, a couple things to remind you of. Uh, be watching this page, this space, uh, where we'll be uh, letting you know how you can purchase tickets for this Sunday night's 
Tony Vizic presents Sunday Night's Funnier Mother's Day edition. We've got the very funny uh, Diane Miner, who's a very funny comic and a great mother, the mother of Travis Miner. Uh, she's going to be on the show. Uh, if you're looking for something new to do, if you're looking for something new to watch, if you're, my God, I've watched everything on Showtime. I've watched everything on on Cinemax. I've watched everything on Skinemax. I've, uh, for God's sakes, I've dug it out DVDs and a DVD player. I need to see something new. I got something new for you Sunday night. Tony Vizic pre presents Sunday Night's Funnier. That's coming up this Sunday. Uh, also, you can begin to look at my page. If you ever thought about doing stand-up comedy, if you ever want to become a better speaker, if you want to be able to connect with people a little better, if you're just looking for something to do, something fun, uh, check out our uh, our stand-up comedy classes. Uh, go to comedyschools.com. You see how you can register. You can uh, write to me, Tony, uh, Tony Visick at comedyschools at hotmail.com. Hell, you can call me at 818 571 5653 and I'll talk to you about it. So we've got all that going on. And beyond that, tomorrow, 2 p.m., we're back here, 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, with another edition of Living on a Thin Line on Comedy Schools Radio Network.com, on YouTube, Comedy Schools Channel, and on Facebook Live. I'll miss every one of you till I see you again tomorrow. Bye bye. Goodbye, my YouTube friends. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. You hang in there. Everything's going to be A-OK. -okay.